We were able to cajole 114 soldiers, if we want to call them that, because most of them were fugitives of the law. With inexperienced men, meager supplies, and four horses we left on our first expedition on November 14, 1524, but not before receiving the blessings of the Almighty. Don Francisco you chose the worst time to unfurl the sails, as mentioned by the chronicler Pedro Cieza de Leon. You encountered contrary winds and undercurrents, making your boat a mere cork lost in the tempestuous southern seas. How was I supposed to know? We didn't even have an experienced pilot. We had to make our own charts, as we sailed south. Initially we navigated in known waters, arriving to the Isla de las Perlas, which was inhabited by Christians who at one time made their living from the bounty of pearls, and it became a supply port for our future expeditions. Once replenished, we crossed the Gulf of St. Michael to Porta Piñas. Then we marched by the shores of the River Viru. We met the subjects of the old cacique Birakit or Parakit who ran away from us thinking that we might harm them. We were just looking for food and friends. Friends, Don Francisco? They knew that you massacred the natives. What did you expect them to do, welcome you as their redeemer? Kono. They were not different than the savages we were decimating in Panama. After a few days, we returned with some maize and a few specks of gold. Practically without supplies, we continued south looking for a place to replenish. But the savages and the jungles made it impossible for us to disembark, until we saw a stretch of land that it seemed to offer some hope of finding food. We found none, except some mollusks and acid palm nuts to eat. We called the place Porta de Hambra, we stayed a few days, and proceeded south. Seeing only dense forest we returned to Port of Hunger where we could, at least, eat the angry crabs and acid nuts. I had already lost one Spaniard and more were waiting to die. With no end in sight to our misery and facing a possible mutiny, I decided to send my second in command to get some supplies in the Isle of Pearls. Thinking that it should take him no more than ten days, it took him more than a month to return. Since this is a sole trip, let them tell you of their ordeals. Montenegro, why did it take you so long to come back? Capitan. We encountered storms and strong currents that prolonged the short trip to the island. With so little food, we had to boil the leather of our bilge pumps with some nuts and eat that acid soup. But, here we are. We are bringing you some pigs that had just been brought from Spain. Mierda. While you were gone, I have lost half of my men to hunger and rare diseases. I have also suffered as much as they did. Yes, Montenegro. Don Francisco took no special privileges. He endured everything like the rest of us. He deserves to be called El Bune Capitan. Yeah, you cursed soldier. Now you call me the good captain, when you were the one close to mutiny. Let us eat, then continue. So far, we have advanced only a few more leagues than Andagoya did. I promise. I shall never return to Panama empty-handed. Man of the future, as you have heard and against all odds, we arrived to a place that we called Virgin of Candelaria. Two and a half months, and all we had encountered was death and misery. This was not a virgin's place, it was hell. So many mosquitoes and heavy rains that it made impossible for us to stay. I exhorted my soldiers, hombres. Let us go inland. Who knows, we may find Indians. We interned twelve leagues, and we saw huts that were abandoned in fear of us. In their hasty retreat they left gold, maize, and some kind of meat that tasted like our pork. Did you decide to stay, since you found food and gold? No. Because we also noticed in their boiling pots hands and feet of other savages. We thought that they were the same cannibals of the Caribbean, my crew became very concerned for their lives. We took whatever we could, and ran before we ended up in the same pots. We renewed our trip south, until we saw a forest that had been burned. We called it Porta Quemado. Having encountered no resistance, we stayed to repair our boat that was in need of changing some rotten timbers. 
I sent Montenegro to find Indians to do the work. However, the savages had been following us and they came to our post to kill us. I got hold of my sword to confront them, but the bastards were so many that I knew I was fighting my last battle. Montenegro, who just happened to return, saved my life. But not before I had an arrow that penetrated deep into my thigh. They pulled the arrow, but they also tore my flesh. They poured boiling oil into my bleeding wound. This one time only I cried my lungs out not of cowardice, but because I knew I could withstand pain. My men understood that my determination to persevere was unbending, and this message was sealed with that burning oil. When I came to my senses, I knew that we needed more ships, men, supplies, and horses. I decided that Porta Quemado should be the end of our first adventure. We returned north to Chachma to organize a second expedition. Why was the place burned? Was it an act of nature? No. This time lightning had nothing to do with the charring of the forest, but with the savages. Why? Because, from the time of Columbus we have been stealing from the Indians. In revenge they put on fire their villages, so that we could not have any of their possessions. The savages of Porta Quemado heard what we did with them, and they burned whatever they had. How else can one treat these Indians if not by exterminating them? Isn't that what our descendants in the 21st century are doing with the natives who are not savages anymore, or are they? Don Francisco, they are no longer the savages whom you knew. They are now the Indians who believe in your God. Kono. That is a sacrilegious comment. The world is for the fittest and why we have religion, so that the weak can hope in the hereafter. The priests do a good job of preaching to the Indians of humbleness. In a way they are the same butchers that we are. While we wear armor and steel helmets they dress with silky robes and fancy hats. As you can see they are the strongest without having to use raw power, but utter the name of God. Don Francisco, that is not becoming of you, you are a religious man. Indiano. I believe in God, but not in some of their clerics. After all, I honor my king. But do I care for his bureaucrats? Let us stop this discussion. You also have to respond to your readers, who are going to be harsher on you for undermining their beliefs. As I was saying, in our last desperate moments we sailed north from Porta Quemado to Chachama. From here, I sent the leaking Santiago to Panama with a few of our loyal men needed for sailing. I knew that if I let others go they would spread rumors of all the misery that we were going through, and no one would have wanted to come for the second expedition. I sent our accountant, Nicolas de Rivera, to give an account to the governor of the possibilities of striking it rich. I remained behind. Death meant nothing to me. I wanted glory to prove to my family, King, and God that I was in Hidalgo. In the Isla de Perlas, Nicolas de Rivera was told that Almagro had already sailed to join our expedition. We went after him, but we did not see him. We thought that Almagro was probably going on his own. Let him tell you about his odyssey. Oh! You are that man of the future who doesn't know whether to side with the Spaniards or the Indians? I know of your predicament. I also have a son with an Indian woman of Panama, but you are only a descendant of mestizos. Does that make me lesser of a man? In my times you would not have even been considered a human being. Almagro, that must resonate with you, because you were also despised by your own people. Man of the future, let us continue that there isn't much I can do of what they wrote about me.